Man, you come straight out of a car. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, I have my shades on. Welcome to another episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book. I am your host, Will Farrow. As you can see, feeling some type of way because I am suffering from X-Men withdrawals. It's Wednesday. This is the first time that... Um, we are without the beloved X-Men 97 since it has <sighs> premiered its season finale. And I got to say, I don't like this feeling that I'm having. I don't like it. But we are going to talk about that plus so much more today on today's episode. First, I just want to say shout out to everybody who was watching this on not one, not two, but five, five channels we are streaming on right now. We truly live in a wonderful time. We are on my Twitch, my YouTube, RK Tokens Twitch, RK Tokens YouTube, and RK Tokens on Facebook. Thank you, everybody that's checking it out right now. Everybody that is watching, if you are joining just now, I really appreciate that. If you are able to chat with us, come chat with us. Uh, Easy Not from Twitch is saying this is hard. Uh, Animosity 785. I'm going to take these off because I can't see shit. And because that clearly says 585. So um, let's go back to the Clark Kents. So if you are on any of these platforms and you're able to chat, Jump in the chat and come join us. But we are across five platforms right now. I'm thanking everybody that's joining us right now. We got a lot to talk about. Um, if you are a fan and have been a fan, normally Strat of a Comic Book is on Saturday. Cops tells a recovering Wolverine. Don't you dare break your heart. I missed it last Saturday do. Uh, because Heal. I had an event that I had to host. So we are catching up today. We will still have one Saturday. So don't don't fret. We will have one Saturday as well. And normally on Wednesdays we do the fleet. But, of course, the cats at the fleet are a little bit busy. They leading their lives right now. So we up in here. Uh, Odds right. so, may be oh, bad, I gotta make but sure the cards are always in the X-Men's favor. We lit. His we name lit. was Gambit. Remember it. You see me? We out here. We out here. Well, man, we got a lot to get into today. Um, so we starting, of course, with straight out of a comic book. So welcome to straight out of a comic book. Again, I'm your host, Will Farrow, and we are. We got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to catch up on um, today, and I don't, I don't want to start no later than what we already start. So let's get this thing started. We go start with video game news. All right, we doing some. We talking video games today. So in video game news, we've heard that Grand Theft Auto officially got a time they're gonna come out in 2025. Now. We've been hearing all different kinds of dates of when this was supposed to drop, and we keep getting things, we keep hearing stuff, but officially we've been told that it's 2025, and um, it's going to come out in the fall. Animosity 585, I appreciate it. I'm glad you're here for it all. I'm glad you uh, catch up on Spotify. I'm going to definitely be putting more of the audio versions up there. They will be dropping, so uh, just stay tuned for that. But we did find out that Grand Theft Auto V is going to be coming out fall 2025. 2025 fall. We don't have it. Raises the sentinel foot and Cyclops recognizes that it's time to stop fighting the future. Your mother lied. So that could be a... The professor came to you, Bastion. That could be an August, September. It was to protect me! It could even splash into November, if I'm being honest with y'all. November be kind of that mixture of like when winter start... And it's still kind of in that fallish area, but no give, no word given yet as to when it's going to have the official date. But it seems like we're getting, getting closer and closer. So 
I'm excited. As y'all know, we uh, fleet here on Twitch. Uh, most of the time, we'll fleet, we'll talk, uh, and play Grand Theft Auto V, The Last Days of Los Santos. Um, yeah, so school season, as King Mike Hall over on YouTube said in the comments. Yeah, so, sort of like maybe school season, or I would say even too, closer to the holiday run. Like closer to the holiday run. Like I said, somewhere maybe like October, November type maybe. Or like you said, maybe a hard August. Uh, August. We might get a hard August right at the beginning of school. Not sure, but I'm going with either August or October that we get Grand Theft Auto Five. And um, so, yeah, I'm excited. I know everybody else that plays it is excited. And we can't wait to see what happens and what goes on. So, looking forward to that. But we're going to keep it pushing with more video game news. Um, last week, we got the trailer for the new Assassin's Creed Shadows game, uh, where it takes place in Japan. We messing with the samurais and the ninjas up in this piece. But it's been a little controversy, y'all. It's been a little controversy. It's been a little controversy amongst the Assassin's Creed Shadows game after dropping. Um, apparently, a lot of dumbasses are under the misconception of Japanese history because a lot of folks were upset that one of the featured characters is a black samurai uh, by the name of Yasuke. Now, again, I might have said that wrong because I am from the South, but uh, Yasuke is the but it's particular less a question person about of interest in war. this game. And we've had a lot when. of people commenting about how Oh, how dare y'all appropriate people's culture or the ja uh, from, from Japan, this and blah, 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 and getting upset and everything. And it's just like at any time where you could say Google some shit, this is the time where you could say Google some shit. Why? Because Yasuke is actually a real person. This isn't something they just made up for the video game. Yasuke is a legitimate part of Japanese history. He is one of the first samurai, or if not one of the first black samurais. He was in first in prison and then actually brought to Japan. And during that time, they made him join into the samurai culture and basically become a guard, which turned, which in doubt he became a samurai. That's not that's not fairy tale fiction. You could go Google it. You can go look in a book at a at your local library. That man is recorded. Not only that, they've had an entire anime on Netflix that you could check out where they talk about this person. So it's not appropriating the culture. It's not them going, oh man, y'all done took this away. No, 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 no. 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 <clears throat> that's not it at all. And if we being honest. I love how all these folks that got jumped up and raising arms about this person. I like how don't none of them say anything when it's a person of the Caucasian doing it. I didn't hear no uproar when Tom Cruise was the last samurai. I didn't hear nothing about Matt Damon when they did The Great Wall. We didn't hear nothing about Gerard Butler and Sigourney Weaver when they played Gods of Egypt. Meaning, y'all ain't had nothing to say about that. Wasn't nobody complaining then. Y'all, y'all, y'all didn't say nothing in them comments when that was coming out. But now all of a sudden. You see one of us, and it's like, oh, oh, come on now. What are we doing? When are we going to play it all around the boards? It was one of them other movies that uh, uh, Angelina Jolie played when she played a mixed-race historical figure. I can't remember her name at the time right now, but she was black and white, and you cast Angelina Jolie to play her. Wasn't no uproar about that. What no uproar about that? That's that's real interesting. As I sit from my Stanley Cup, shout out to Stanley. A lot of uproar, man. Do your history though. 
Do your history. That makes me just more excited for this game. I already like the Assassin's Creed franchise. So with them being able to come out with another one, and this time going to a place where everybody has been asking about it for, has finally made its way into here, and it's gonna the map is going to be as big as one of the if if the not biggest one of the biggest uh stages which was Egypt it is supposed to be that exact same size so um and then uh shout out to Kinky Bear X man for sending the spam message out here that's how you know we doing big things out here live on straight out of a comic book we got them sending out the uh <laughs> the good old spam i'm gonna need to get a monitor when we going live on all five channels uh which we will be doing moving forward so i will definitely be hitting up my moderator to help a brother out but in the meantime excited for this video game can't wait to see the gameplay that's what i'm more interested in i'm loving the graphics that i saw i'm loving the uh in between uh cuts that they used i want to see some gameplay though that's what i'm excited to see so uh that's gonna wrap up our video game news for right now so now we're gonna jump into a little bit of movie news gonna jump into some movie news and one of the movie news being we got us a nice anniversary that we want to talk about the monster verse is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. And what that means is particularly, it has been 10 years since the release of the original Godzilla movie starring Brian Cranston, uh, Aaron Johnson Taylor, or I might have the Taylor Johnson mixed up, but Quicksilver from Marvel's Avengers. Um, it has been 10 years since that movie released and we've seen the other reinsurgence of the Kong and all of the great other monsters that have came from Godzilla, such as Mothra, that three-headed motherfucker that be out there in them streets, and so on and so forth. But happy anniversary to them. Um, it is great to see. Great to see the combinations of what they're doing as far as expanding the universe for not only movies, but also television, as you've seen from uh, uh, Monarch's TV series starring Kurt Russell and his son which is a very dope series that's on apple tv if you have not watched it yet go and check it out i promise you it is if you like godzilla if you like kong you're gonna like monarch that is one of my feral watches for y'all to go see today go and check that out i promise you you won't be disappointed but shout out to the monster verse i look forward to seeing what's gonna happen what they how they'll continue to do everything how they'll keep coming with stuff i particularly liked godzilla versus kong the new empire you know to some people it they had their own opinions about it me i enjoyed it so shout out to the monster verse hope y'all keep going and hope y'all keep producing amazing content um and like i said we're gonna keep this thing rolling because we do got like i said we got a lot to talk about um uh, more movie news uh, one of my other watches for um, the audience is Furiosa. Furiosa. I was blessed to be able to go see an early screening of Furiosa. It is incredible. Okay. I've seen people give this a 10 out of 10. Now, I ain't saying it's a 10 out of 10. But dang it, it's close to it. If, we, if anything is close to a 10 out of 10, it is this movie george miller does not disappoint and continue when the mad max saga and man the woman playing furiosa i can't remember her name at the time but i know it's anna something uh but we've seen her in so many movies the queen's gambit uh the menu uh so many things that we've seen her in even uh new mutants a phenomenal actress and she did not disappoint playing the young Furiosa and showing us why Charlie's character uh, Charlie Theron's character became such a cult classic character that people love to watch and to see this doesn't disappoint though Chris Hemsworth is incredible as his character it's like you know and you know what's crazy it is if Thor went crazy and was left on a planet this is what Thor would turn into and this is what's funny about it is I really feel like he did pull from Ragnarok and then justify Ragnarok stuff with this one in Furiosa. So 
Not exactly sure when it's dropping in theaters, but uh, when it does, and if you need something to watch, if you're not doing too much on a Tuesday, because we know how expensive the movie theaters is getting, if you got a Tuesday afternoon where you can go to the movies, go watch Furiosa. It's, it's action, it's blood, it's gasoline, it's sand, it's cars, it's rock music. It is everything you just want to go, shit! They just put everything in this motherfucker, didn't they? Furiosa, one of my top picks that I am enjoying right now. And then another one that we have uh, kind of moving into television news now. Um, in television news, we have found out that the boys have been renewed for season five. Now, season four comes out next month and already before it's even aired the first episode, Amazon has already renewed it for a fifth season along with giving us a preview to the season two of lord of the rings during a conference uh previously within the week i think this is a phenomenal idea a phenomenal decision on amazon's part and hopefully that allows us to get the boys season five a little bit sooner you know just a little bit uh, a little excuse me just a little bit sooner than w what we had to wait for for season four i'm very excited for season four if you've seen the trailers, um, if you haven't, I'm not going to try to give too many spoilers, but it seems like we, we got a lot uh, to look forward to in this fourth season. And then even so, uh, Dennis Quaid, son, <laughs> I'm still, that's Dennis Quaid, son to me. I don't care. I, I know he got a name, but he's Dennis Quaid, son to me. Um, Huey got on, a, a um, had an interview and had stated that this season is one by far his favorite and actually tops everything they have done so far. That's a lot to put on this season to say that it tops everything that they've done from seasons one through three. There was a guy that ran inside another guy's dick and sneezed and enlarged while he was inside and killed him. There was a brother that ran through some woman that was standing on the street. Homelander, this guy. I beamed the lady from fucking uh, Chucky through her eyes and then let that baby die. I still say, yo, that's, that's how I knew Homelander was so fucked up. When home, when you got beef with a baby, something ain't right with you. This man had a whole beef with a baby in the first season of The Boys. That man was really, really on something. King Mike Hall, it, it is true. It, it, it's it. There are some scenes where you see where you just kind of like, whoa, whoa, come on now, hold up. Because I ain't gonna lie, the 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 scene with him running through a guy's penis was a lot. That I was I was not ready for it, um, but you know this is the life we in now. So you know when you are trying to make everything a part of the normal, those are some of the things that you now gonna get. Because I, I remember someone stating um, as a reverse to that, would you have been upset if it was let's say for for instance a woman or a man running through a vagina and that happened. So it's just kind of it's just kind of like yo it, it's the new normal, that's where it is. But I can understand why it can kind of you know like there's a lot of stuff inside the show that makes people feel uncomfortable, and makes you kind of just go ooh, I need to cut this off for a second. Like when old girl was riding that um, made the landlord's face and crushed it. I was like, that's one of my worst fears. Also, like to to die with a woman on your face, like. I know people be laughing about suffocating and stuff, um, but that is crazy. Uh, but we got we got some comments in here. Uh, Miles from YouTube said, what are y'all watching instead of X-Men 97? Just finished and searching the knocked out Invincible and the boys need that hero fix. Um, um. Ah, that's a good one. If you want anime and you haven't watched My Hero Academia, you can watch that. 
if you have Netflix, you could also check out the live action One Piece or Avatar, uh, The Last Airbender, or even Yu Yu Hakusho. If you if you have and you don't need to watch the animes in order to watch the live versions of that. So if you want something in that particular case, you can. Uh, Rebel Moon is cool. It's a little slow, but it it it, it I like it. Um. What was oh man is okay. There's another show on on, on Netflix. Um, uh, you you're gonna get pissed off because it's only one season, but I think it's called Jupiter Rising. If memory serves me correct, that's a good superhero television series. They only gave it one season, unfortunately. But if you go watch that on YouTube, it is a really good show because it's kind of something like similar to the boys, but you know, not so as chaotic, but it, but it shows like the psyche of what a hero would be like in our time. Um, so that is something that I would definitely go check out to give yourself that superhero fix uh, miles over at YouTube. So yeah, man, just happy to hear that the boys are, Coming back strong for season four, and we can expect them in season five. Can't uh, can't wait, but to see exactly what they're going to get into. Uh, but we're going to keep it with some television news, of course. And this one now was coming more from the Marvel standpoint. And so Marvel j uh, just announced after such a successful premiere of X-Men 97, they've released 12 new TV series that are confirmed to be coming out after the success of X-Men. Now, of course, we know Agatha all along was going to be uh, guaranteed. I think it's also supposed to be coming out this year. Uh, we know Eyes of Wakanda is coming out. Not sure if it is animated not sure if it's live action we've been hearing both so not really sure what eyes of wakanda is supposed to be about uh daredevil born again is also to come um no longer 18 episodes it's now just nine episodes um but i guess if you want to break those up and everything which i think they are i think they're going to kind of do a part one then part two for us because for some reason, just to cut it straight in half makes me think you had other episodes that you just want to clean up, but try to still make your deadline. Uh, Ironheart is back on the table. Uh, at first, you know, we heard a lot of uh, some of these shows weren't making it back, like Armor Wars um, had got put on the shelf, as well as Ironheart. But Ironheart has, you know, just like in good old Tony Stark fashion, it came back to life. And it's keeping those little spores from taking it out. So we are still getting Ironheart. We're also getting X-Men 97 Season 2. Um, hasn't been officially confirmed, but confirmed in a sense. Which, you know, it wouldn't make no sense to not come back with it. Uh, we're also going to get a What If Season 3. Oh, excuse me. Uh, we're also going to get a What If Season 3 which I uh, look at very forward to. If you remember after season two, during last year's holiday run, they also put out a clip of what to expect from the next season, which of course was um, Bucky and the, uh, the Guardian and focusing on them. And uh, from two... Uh, 2YNC is saying Hulk's son Scar is coming too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We 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 know. We know. We we know. We know that live action Scar is coming. Not excited after what I saw. Not excited after what I saw. How is your son taller than you in the comic, but then shorter than you? In live action, but whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, continuing to go on, Wonder Man is coming out as well. It's still going to be making its debut. Very excited for that. Very excited to see Yaya now in the MCU and seeing what he'll bring to it. And then one of the biggest questions people have always had, you know, Marvel has left a, uh, quite a few things always hanging in the ether as far as unanswered questions. And one of the biggest ones was, what the fuck happened to Vision? 
whatever happened to him. But now we're finally going to find out as we are. It has been confirmed and even confirmed more this week that Vision Quest will be the follow up to WandaVision with uh, uh, Paul Bethany returning as Vision. So we will find out what happened to White Vision, what happened to the other Vision and so on and so forth. And then we have uh, two untitled series which is of course another one that's focused on wakanda and then another one that's going to be focused on nova so i'm not sure if we're doing the nova core the nova prime but i'm particularly excited with that one just before the just because of the simple fact that when we last left nova it had been told it was destroyed by thanos when he came to uh get the power stone and so if that be the case that would be particularly where I would think we're picking up after unless they have us picking up five years after and they've kind of established themselves. Not sure, but I know there's a lot of depth as far as storyline goes for Nova uh, moving forward within this series. And last but certainly not least is your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Now, this one is going to be a cartoon, and I think this one picks up where he's in high school as Spider-Man. And you'll get to see like a lot of the characters from the Spider-Man franchise make their way into uh, the show as well. So, you know, looking forward to another little spin on him as well. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. As we know, you uh, Marvel will only be dropping two to three series a year now. Um, also including films. So we know we're not going to get all of this within the next two years. They're about to start kind of slow rolling these things out, starting off with Agatha all along, most likely, uh, what if season three and then, um, maybe daredevil. And then we'll see exactly what they roll out with next. Uh, most likely wonder man. And then, um, vision quest. Um, so yeah, we you know I again Mar Marvel with the success of X Men ninety seven and then the success of um, Deadpool and Wolverine that's gonna happen seems like Marvel is gonna have a good year in twenty twenty four especially with them already selling out day one for pre sale tickets with AMC uh, and breaking the record for that for R rated movie uh, shout out to you Laura Aloha welcome. We're across five platforms right now, just you know, just doing our thing, just doing our thing. So with that, it's time to get in for what y'all been waiting for. It's time to talk about season finale of X Men '97 and the withdrawals that we are going through. Now, if you've watched this. There's a particular way I do this, this recap and how we talk about it. And, you know, I like to take y'all through. Now, I wanted to do something a little more special. And I wanted to give a video this time. I was like, let's do a video instead of just images. So I took a little time. So bear with me. And, and I made it into a video. And everything. Now, before we get into that, I just heard a comment on YouTube. Uh, two two Y N C asked a question. I'm wondering, does this Deadpool know he is in a comic? So, one thing I will say, I had the theory that I believe he actually he actually wrote the comics of X Men. I believe that he does know that he's in a comic and that he actually started writing the comics and writing out how he thinks that they should go out, which applies to a real life universe, which makes me think the Wolverine that we're seeing is actually the cartoon Wolverine. And he's just been drawing out how everything fucking happens. I think we're going to get some like really like mind blowing stuff with, with, with Deadpool. But, um, I'm not, I'm not going to speculate any further with it. I am just ready for it to drop at the end of July so I can go and fucking enjoy it. So I can enjoy it. All right. So without further ado, let's get into X-Men 97. All right. So X-Men 97, Tolerance is Extinction Part Thress, all right? Um, geez, geez, man. First, 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 first thing, man, I even just, I even got to mention. 
when seeing this. The first thing I have to mention is just all of the amazing cameos that we saw. And for some reason, my stuff don't want to pull up. Why is it doing that? Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, there we go. So let's start. Um, Amazing cameos. Let's start off with that. We had amazing cameos in this episode from Daredevil, from Captain America and Iron Man. Black Panther? These boys put Black Panther in there. They had Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Come on now. We had Mr. Fantastic making an appearance. Man, everybody that we've been we've been trying to get in the MCU popping up. Doctor Strange doing surgery while the lights off. Let me tell y'all something, man. That's that this got to be the most fire scene I have ever seen a superhero do in animated series. This man had the power go off. This dude doing open heart surgery with candles floating and using his magic for the scalpels because you already know he got the he got the shakes. He got the shakes, so he can't do too much because he got the shakes doing surgery. But man, the, the, he is doing surgery with his magic. Not sure why he has the cloak on in the operating room, though. I know it's just a cartoon, but if I'm just if we just going there, is why he got the cloak on? Is the cloak s- sterilized to be in there? Um, I just got questions on that. That that's that's just if if it's for the drip, that's fine. But you, I'm I would feel some type of way if I found out my doctor had a Halloween cloak on while this man did open heart surgery on me. Now, if it helps with the magic, by all means, do your thing. But besides that, I kind of felt like. Is the cloak giving you powers or do you got powers? Like, who's working who right now? But either way, one, he was doing his thing as a hero while stuff was going down because all the power was shut off. The uh, Literally, Magneto shut down all the magnetic plates within the world and shut down everything. But he was out there doing his thing. Now, my other thing. Y'all see it. Y'all see it. Y'all see it. Our boy Peter Parker and M motherfucking J out here in these streets. Now, if you've seen the previous episode of Straight Out of a Comic Book, we asked the question, the question was posed to me, excuse me, if Spider-Man 98 should get a reboot kind of like X-Men 97. And I particularly said, I don't think that it should. I feel like that story came to an end the way it needed to. Resurging the epi- resurging the entire series, I don't think is fully necessary. We saw him do it all. We seen him fight everybody. We saw Spider-Man turn into a spider. We saw him have his own secret wars. We saw him have his own multiversal war where he entered into the Spider-Verse. The man even met his creator and swung him around New York. The only thing that we did not find out that was lingering was did he ever find MJ? And they finally answered it. They that he is reunited with the real MJ. If you remember from the cartoon, it was his clone that was made out of water and then she evaporated um, and then he couldn't find him. But it comes to see that he is MJ is well and fine, which once again makes with the question posed. I do not feel like they need to reboot the Spider-Man series just for the simple fact that they finally answered the question that everybody wanted to know. Did he find MJ? And he did. So. We good, but the creator and the showrunner of X-Men 97, the reboot did say we will see Spider-Man feature in X-Men 97 more along with other characters as well. So at least we are still getting him in some type of way. So I can't be mad at that. But I was just amazed at all of the uh, people that we've seen. And of course, even Cloak and Dagger. Cloak and Dagger got in on the action, man. I'm like, oh, yo, come on. 
Come on. Everybody that we've seen live action from even like the Hulu series. And I fucked with the Hulu series. I'm kind of still bummed that they, uh, that they canceled it. But I understand. So I understand. <laughs> so. And so uh, I, King Mike Hall from Twitch had a thing. I'd like to see our real Spider-Man meet Miles. That's fine. But you can do that in the X-Men episode. Am I wrong? You can do that in an X-Men episode and still be good. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's not necessary for him to have a show. And then if that would be the case, then they would move to Miles having the show. And if you're going to do that, I guess, but it's still just not strong enough to convince me to want to see it. As of right now, at least. So, yeah, these were all of the folks we saw. And then, of course, the Easter egg at the end. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Psylocke, everybody was in here. But let's start off from the beginning. Let's start off from the beginning. So, we found uh, Charles and Magneto in a fucked up bar up in Germany after the war. And, of course, Charles is out here spitting that bullshit like he usually do. Every damn time. See, look, 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 I want you to look at this image. Look how pompous this motherfucker is, bro. That's why I don't fuck with Charles. That's why I don't fuck with him. Look, look how Charles be acting when he talking. Like, he just so high and mighty, man. Like, he just think he know it all. He just, just, ooh, just, ooh. And then they got on a fucking turtleneck. Whatever. What am I on? Ooh, this motherfucker make me so mad, man. But anyway, they're in here, they're talking, and they're discussing um, about mutants. And of course, this is around the time where mutants haven't really came out of the proverbial closet. And as you can see here, this is where you know, uh, fir first hand where Charles out here invading people's minds without their permission and letting him know like I'm a mutant. And then my boy Eric up here, he was just like, hey, that's cool, but I, I'm not finna do it. He was just like, I know what happened in this country. I ain't doing that. But then what particularly happens is he starts hearing waves, starts hearing water. And then all of a sudden transition, we didn't found out this, this motherfucker Charles got him in a damn mind fuck right now. Got him in a little cage in his mind, fucking with him. Just out here fucking with him. Because Magneto don't want to turn the lights back on on Earth. So he out here in this man's mind showing him, trying to put him in some old old school bar where we first met. Like it's supposed to be all reminiscing. You remember the first time we came together? Charles, fuck you. Fuck you. I just tried to crush you, crush your head with a helmet. I'm not trying to walk down memory lane right now. This, this is what you want to do. You notice he ain't got out that seat. Yo, why does Charles not know how to walk in these mental scenarios? <laughs> he don't never walk. Even when he, he took the Shatari people to school in his mind, he didn't walk. Like, did he forget how to walk? But he's supposed to be some powerful mutant. Anyway, I digress. So Magneto has caught on and now realizes he is trapped in, in a mind fuck Thanks to this old jackass over here and just got me trapped while I'm sitting here trying to free all mutant kind. Yeah, all the mutant kind. And then this what you doing. So he got him trapped, got him looking at shit. Look at this. Got the boat out there full of his loved ones. Ain't that a bit? Yo, why people keep thinking Charles is that dude? Like, who does this? Like, yo, like, there go his ex-girlfriend, his two kids in the back, and then his third kid, Polaris, Polaris, right there. The one that's in green kind of shadow, that's the third kid. That's that's like the one he don't claim for some reason. But that's the most powerful one outside of Scarlet Witch. She powerful as fuck. But man, he don't be claiming her like that for some reason. I don't, I don't know if, if her and his mama, like, done some shit and she don't fuck with him like he this first time he didn't have to pay child support for one of the kids because she was like no nah, that's yours nigga that's yours she be messing with that little magnetism shit you do that's your baby it's your baby eric hey everything you damn right he's not over at twitch he trying to keep up the facade and i hope his chair 
battery run out of the warranty. You damn right, I agree with you, brother. But so, Charles, look at Charles over here showing him his fucked up like he can and he can't get to him. They in a pub that's flooding. They out in the ocean, a storm going off and everything. Man, what if the shit hit the boat? And then Captain Iron Boot Chiller then came in. They act like Magneto turned back evil or something. He did Professor X-Way and the human government betrayed him and mutants. But he's supposed to do nothing. You damn right. Got him out here just like, oh, I guess I'm supposed to just let Genosha slide. I guess I'm supposed to just let this Bastion dude who's like half robot seize all of us and put us into slavery and have us build a better world for humans. Ain't that a bitch? And Charles is like, we just have to find a way to coincide, Eric. No, Magnus. Like, Charles, you're so fucking stupid. But this is what he got him doing. So then we end up here. We end up back in the real world where he mind fucking him. They got the wind going. This nigga Charles ain't shit. My nigga Charles, bro, let me, let, can, we, can we take it back? Look at this. Look at this. Look, at look. he need to, like, after all this ended, Eric should have called the police. Eric should have called the police. This is a crime. This right here and what he's doing is a crime. He is going against this man's will and infiltrating this man's mind. That's why you don't trust people in wheelchairs, all right? They always rolling up to something that's no good, and that's what Charles was doing. Charles over here thinking, he was like, well, if you won't do it, I have to do it myself. First of all, first of all, no, you don't. Why don't you just, why, why don't you just leave me alone? Let's see how this go first. We did it your way. Now let's figure out if my way work. You're going to kill millions. You don't know that. Did Gene tell you? Gene didn't even tell you that. Because Gene don't know that. Let's go get a future mutant and see if that's really going to happen. I want to call you. I'm pulling your card, Charles. You're always trying to threaten me with you're going to kill millions. I want to see it. I want to see if it's going to happen. Hell, we already know we can go back in time and change shit because Bishop here and all the rest of these cats. So it ain't like we can't just try it to see if it's going to work. But unfortunately, Charles out here don't give a fuck. He out here, he out here mind fucking people. And eventually, they uh, he didn't got inside his head and he didn't turn the electricity back on on earth. You know what I'm saying? He let, he let, he let the, uh, pre credit card payment go through and now it's cutting back on. You see silver, silver samurai up here. Just looking like, man, this is some, this some shit. Here's the thing. Silver samurai is high as fucking this image. He's high as hell. That's why his face didn't change. Cause anybody else would have been looking like, yo, what the fuck is going on? He just sitting there high as hell. He don't even know. He didn't even know the lights went out. He just standing there. All right, we back at the president with Captain America, uh, Iron Man, and bitch ass President Kelly with his little punk ass. I don't don't be knowing what he don't never have. Pre president Kelly don't never have a side. Even when he was senator, he don't never pick a side. That's what I don't like about him. This man always just doing shit. Always just swaying in the wind. Always just swaying in the damn wind. Uh, Black Sheep over at YouTube stated that in the comments, I think Operation Zero Tolerance was backed by the U.S. government. I believe it was too, but they were unaware of what the actual plan of Zero Tolerance was. They were uh, on to a part of it in which they agreed with, but they didn't know the full back end of what the plan was. Um, before they backed them. So that is, that is true. They did actually help fund uh, Operation Zero Tolerance. Um, and so now they sitting here and then we come back to Bastion. We come back to Bastion af after they didn't talk to, uh, after they didn't talk to, the, uh, after we didn't cut the lights back on. So now Bastion is powered back on. Uh, the Sentinels out here are running a fucking muck. And so now they got Cable over here looking like a little bitch controlled by Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister. This is some cold-ass shit right here, bro. This is some cold-ass shit. That man told him, 
tell me how many times have you attempted to stop me from doing this? Cable said 200 times. You, you, you should cry about that. You really should cry about that. Not for the reasons why y'all think I'm saying he should cry about that. You should cry about that because you suck at your job. Like, as a time-traveling mutant that's supposed to be saving the world, you suck. Shit. Nigga, that, even John Connor stopped this bitch a couple of times. Like, And all he had was a shotgun and a robot. Nigga, you got mental powers, you got biomechanic virus and stuff like that, and you lost 200 times? No wonder Scott didn't come back for your ass. Nigga, I wouldn't, you are a failure. You should find something else to succeed in 200 times. Like, how many times can you wax your arm to where it looks nice? That way you got some kind of victory, because losing 200 times, it's like ridiculous. And that's why he looking like that. And then, of course, uh, in the previous episode, they had Cable fuck up his uh, G, his mom, Jean Grey, who he be acting like ain't his mom, but Madeline Pryor is my mom. Like, all right, nigga, like, it's the same, whatever. And she arises as the phoenix in the water, as, as you can see here, getting called out. Um, she rises up, she puts back the machine that they were going to use to attach to Bastion, which has now made him lose his psychic link to all the Sentinels and then shut all the Sentinels down, which well, I don't know why you would think you going to fuck with a Phoenix. Like, don't nobody know what her powers are. Like, like nobody knows. Can't, ain't nobody has yet quantified the Phoenix power. What make you think your ass stood a chance? And then to make matters worse, Mr. Sinister must have been feeling himself because he for damn sure thought he could do something. That man, like, look, listen. Now, I know we always make fun of, you know, when you're with that special lady and she give you that Gok Gok 3000, and we say she done sucked the, she, she, she done took, she done went on demon time and then took my soul. I don't think, I don't think no woman done done this shit. Ain't no woman, and there ain't no woman. Hey, look, listen, I know it feel like that. I know it feel like that. <laughs> you don't want this happening. <laughs> you don't, you don't want this happening. Boy, Phoenix sucked the mutant DNA out of Mr. Sinister. And if you go back, there's a uh, in the original X-Men show, there's a series, there's an episode where they show him stealing all the mutant powers to become Mr. Sinister and become the person that he is. And even at one time was trying to fuck around with Jean's uh great 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 great, great grandmother. And she him that boy up. Him, that man, up, oh, boy, had the fire eyes like, yo, who you think you fucking with? Sucked the life out this man. Made that man go back to, look at the boy. Look at that young man. Look at that, look at that old young man. Then done him dirt, took all the power away from him, his immortality. Man, and then look, look, this, this shit was fun as fuck to me. Walks up to Morph and was like, he was like, show me, hey player, show me what I look like, man. I can't see myself. What I look like. Morph didn't morph. Did just what the fuck he was supposed to on cue and it was superb. That man transformed into him. Great justification after what Sinister did to him through all those previous seasons of the X-Men series. I felt like this was a good, like, full circle moment for Morph to be able to see. Nigga, Morph is petty. But then then after that, we get, man, listen, we get into some shit. This nigga Bastion was like, all right, man, y'all, you gonna stop my plan? Fuck you. This man ripped off Cable's arm. And slapped the fuck out of him with it. Oh my god! That man and then did something to it to where this shit just started looking like it's gonna bust a nut. And then just a whole bunch of wild shit came out. And it was from like when he was a baby and they gave him that virus. Then all of a sudden, Bastion takes in all of the the busted out tentacles of the arm, and then he transformed into them them cyborgs from the Gargoyles TV show. 
See, remember them? Remember them? T tell me he don't look like that. Tell me we not that's tell me we not looking at the same person. Look, I'm gonna go back. That ain't him. That's Y'all remember gargoyles and they made the the machine gargoyles to come fight the gargoyles? That's that's what Bash should look like. Bashing out here was just like, you know what? Gargoyles is my favorite TV show at this time right now since it is 1997. You know what? I think I'm going to copy that. I like them wings and how they was looking. I'm going to copy that. So, um, and, and to be fair, he did does look like that in the comics. Sorry. He does look like that in the comics. Um, at one point when he does, and he models himself after Archangel actually. So then, um, after that happens, uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, right. King Mike flow over at Twitch took metal Goliath's whole flow, whole flow, man. Shout out to, to gargoyles, bro. One of my favorites. Then we get over, we go back to asteroid M and we on the X wing and, um, you know, if you, you saw the last one, you know Wolverine ain't doing too good. Him too, he also had the life sucked out of him. And it didn't go well. And so they sitting there. Now, this the shit got me. Watch this. You dare break her heart. Be the best at what you do. Heal. That's a cold look. Look, we used to hate. We used to hate on Cyclops. We used to think Cyclops was a bitch for letting Wolverine just be on his chick like that. This man in ten, in 10 episodes made us say, motherfucker, I got y'all. Watch this shit. You know how much of a player you got to be to tell the side nigga? Hey, man. Don't you die on her. Uh, look, I know she look. I know she like the bad boy fantasy. I ain't dumb. Hey, look, listen. I was fucking her clone this whole time. So I already know about your little kiss and shit. I already know about all that stuff, bro. Look, you her little fantasy. Don't you die on her. Don't you die on her, bro. I know you're I know you going to protect her if I ain't here. Don't you die on her, nigga. You heal up and come back and go play your position as second in command when it come to this vagina. Boy, Scott a player, man. Scott wasn't playing no games. Wasn't playing no games. Scott in 10 episodes had us say, hey, you know what, player? You know what, player? We see why you the leader. That's why you are the leader of the X-Men. Shit like that, my boy. Shit like that. Shit right there, my boy, is why he is the leader, why you do not fuck with Cyclops, all right? So then we find out after this happens and he's talking to her, uh, Charles hits us up talking about, Hey man, my X-Men, uh, I have to say, I got to save Eric from the bullshit I did. And I done came up in here and mine fucked this dude so bad that he might, he might need the, the, the helmet and the special, he might have to ride the short bus. So, um, I, you know, because I did that, I got to go back and fix it. Um, uh, but while that's happening, and I'm trying to get him to remember who he is. Um, Gene Gray also tells everybody that, hey, uh, Bastion is on his way. Bastion is on his way. And uh, he about to blow that. He about, he about to drop this asteroid onto Earth. Kind of like how they did in Age of Ultron. So Bastion is on his way to Asteroid M. And I love what Rogue said Odds to them. Odds may be bad. But the cards are always in the X-Men's favor. That's a cold ass line, man. So he arrives and he's trying to get to the core. Bastion wants to get to the core, knock this motherfucker out, and drop this some bitch nigga like a slam dunk on Earth and just kill out everybody. Now all of a sudden, he don't like nobody. All of us, I don't know what happened in the last four minutes. After he slapped the shit out of um out of cable with his own arm and then turned into fucking Metal Goliath, 
But now all of a sudden, he don't fuck with humans either. Now everybody got to go, and he want to turn this shit into the Matrix. And no and behold. His name was Gambit. Remember it. Put the paws on this man. Look, if, if you forever for a second forgot why Rogue was that woman, if for a second you forgot why Rogue was that woman, she just showed you why. Look, just, just watch how this whole shit went. Hot dog, she, she bit a robot's face like it was skin, all right? And look, took off. And beating his ass. Now that's the that that is the blue place, like we saw uh, in the previous uh, X Men. That's where the Watcher stays, and so that's why they was able to breathe. So you know, people was wondering, like, nigga, how you on the moon fighting somebody? But then, of course, Bastion shows why he that dude Sunspot try to come help out. Finally, uh, I guess he ain't scared to just show off to everybody now that his mama not seeing him do it because he on the moon or whatever. Uh, and so they fighting and even, even to the point where you like rogue broke bastion's jaw that's how powerful rogue is but then we come back to good old bitch ass president kelly who just out here any, let me tell you something any anybody anybody who got these glasses where you can't see their face is up to no good this this in cartoon history teaches you that you should not trust this person I'm letting y'all know that now. Anytime you see this person, he is not to be trusted. When they have glasses that reflect and you can't see their eyes, do not trust them. And that's what President Kelly taught us because everybody's sitting here trying to talk to him and he's trying to figure stuff out. And then we see Black Panther without the mask and we learn that that is T'Chaka, not T'Challa. And I know a lot of people were trying to wonder, it's like, okay, well, why you didn't have T'Challa in here? Y'all got to remember it's 97. It's 1997, so for all purposes, he may not have picked up the mantle just yet. And I believe in this 97 version, this is the one where T'Challa goes to America to get that American co uh, uh, education and then comes back when uh, his father passes. So um, that's why I was like, this makes sense um, that this happened. This makes sense why this happened, why this was going to be. Uh, I.B. Walker, thank you so much for joining us here on the live chat. Don't worry, I will be putting this up tomorrow on my YouTube. We're going to put a uh, part of it on RK Tokens YouTube as well, but you can watch the full version on my YouTube channel. Uh, but that is why I understood why T'Chaka was the current Black Panther and not T'Challa. So it made more sense to me to have him there in 1997 than to have the one that we're so familiar with, which is T'Challa. Um, and then we get into Magneto Protocol, which is basically, we're going to shoot a whole bunch of missiles at Asteroid M. Hip, 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 here's my problem. Here's my problem. Here's my problem with all of this. Why is it always we going to fire a missile at something? Why don't we have something more creative for us to do? Every time some shit happens, they be like, we're going to fire a missile at it. We're going to fire a nuke at it. What? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Oppenheimer did his thing in the 50s with the, with the atom bomb. And I don't mean like he did it in a good way, like creating it. He did that thing around that time in the 50s. We, we ain't got no laser beam we can shoot at this dude. We ain't got, we ain't got no infinite laser that could go up there, penetrate everything and just blow his shit up. We ain't got a rail gun. Like, I, like I, I, I just don't get, like, you can make mutant-stopping equipment, make mutant-stopping equipment, but the only thing you're going to fire at an asteroid from a dude 
made that can control metal, you gonna shoot metal tubes of radiation at his shit. Thank you, Godzilla fan over at Twitch. Because I, I, I just stated it. You, you shot metal missiles at him. And then if it would have turned, if he'd have just been like. Y'all would have ended Earth. Y'all would have been responsible for destroying Earth. Because it's like, what the, like, why ain't there a better version of a protocol? Walk me through that. And Betty Boop on YouTube, you are right. It was a dumb idea. It been a dumbass idea. But for some reason, they were doing it anyway. I don't know. Don't understand why. It's all stupid. But you know what wasn't stupid was what I caught here uh, watching the film, uh, watching the series, uh, well, the episode. Um, and I had stopped just because I like to like read these things because you never know what's in there. And what I definitely found interesting, and, I, and again, I know people have probably already like put this out, uh, is what they have for Magneto. And I just love the attention to detail that they have. So if you look here on it, if you look at Magneto's picture and you go down, it says real name Magnus, a.k.a. Eric Lyncher, which I just realized now is backwards because how the fuck is his government name, the a.k.a.? And his real name is Magnus. Isn't his real name Eric Lyncher, a.k.a. Magnus? Now that I'm just seeing that, like, that don't, that, that, that's, that's, somebody should be fired. This is, this is, this is why I don't fuck with President Kelly. This is why. You got dumbasses making your pro making your reports. How you Anyway, you're not gonna they're not gonna they're not gonna spoil this. They're not gonna spoil this for me. Uh what I also noticed was if you look closely over there, I know it's kind of maybe a little difficult to see, but under the AKAs, there's uh three names, and I thought that this was so cool. There's David Heblum. David Heblum was the original voice of Magneto in the X-Men cartoon series, and unfortunately, he did pass away, uh, but he was the original voice of Magneto. And then as you can see, blurred out is Ian and Michael. And that is in reference to Ian McKellen and Michael Fassbender, the two live action Magnetos in the live action X-Men series. I just thought that was some of the coolest stuff to see. But what is very, very interesting is that this is in here and that they've actually now made our reality canon within this reality of the X-Men. Also kind of showing, I believe, that this is an alternate X-Men, an alternate reality within the MCU to be able to acknowledge that, letting us know that there is actual canon within our world and their world. Um, so I just thought that that was dope. But yeah, it's Eric Magnus Lyncher, but his real name is Eric Lyncher, not Magnus. Like he got named like Prince or fucking Seal. Be like, what's your real name? Magnus. All right, what's your last name? Magnus. So your name is Magnus Magnus? No, it's just Magnus. Well, that don't make no sense. Um... I need you to go get in line over there with them other people. Um, I ain't going to tell you what happened, but I need you to go over there with them. Don't go with your parents. Go go, go over there. Go over there, Magnus. Make sure he's in the middle. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, this was to name uh, the Magneto Protocols. Then we get back to Charles over here still mind fucking uh, Magneto, and now Magneto didn't freak the fuck out because he don't remember who he is because, you know, Charles Xavier want to go too far. Now he didn't hit him with the men in black little thing. And now he don't know who the fuck he is. Now he got to try to tell him so he can remember 
who the hell he is. Then we start, then we get into the whole Lion King shit, like, remember who you are. And then, of course, Magneto ass is just like shaking, can't remember his parents' faces, can't remember his loved ones, none of that shit. He's just trying to remember, like, yo, I think I know you. I met you at a ball one time. Then we get into the fight with Bastion on Asteroid M. And let me tell you, this is what I love about the X-Men because they, the tag team that they use as an entire team shows you why the X-Men ain't shit to fuck with. Avengers don't do this. Avengers do not do this. Avengers do not ever do this shit. First of all, consistently making Nightcrawler just look like the beast that he is kicking his ass. And then just whooping, whooping, and then pissed off. Boy, look, man, first off, Cyclops come through with the high beams on. He was like, you know what I'm taking? I'm taking safety off on this one. Turn this bitch all the way up. This stuff reminded me of Marvel versus Capcom 2. When you be in the corner and he let off that, that supersonic beam, this, this is what they remind me of. Even Jubilee, boy, and I have been adoring Jubilee's run in this series, in this new uh, season. Why? Because it really shows you why she is a crucial part to the X-Men. And that it's not just this kid role that she plays. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not something where they just protecting her. Like, yo, Jubilee can get down, man. So much, she threw this motherfucker into a sentinel. They be jumping the shit out. Look at, look at that. Look at what she did to Bastion. Boy, she got bashed and whole eye popped out like she Kimbo Slice. Out here just, out here just loose. My boy loose in the membranes right now. Wires fucked up. Motherfucking shit just popped out, man. This man done gotten hemmed up. But then, of course, man, again, machine. So, you know, he didn't. Had to put himself back together and stuff like that. But that I don't, that, that whole little eye he had at first, not a real eye out. They didn't punch your little mechanical eye out. Now your real eye hanging out. And so, but just when he thought he had a friend, fuck damn Sentinel stepped on him. Who it is? The rest of the clique ready to jump his ass. Ready to jump this motherfucker. J yep, like, like Sage uh, D said on YouTube, just like Jiu-Jitsu Kaisen. Just like Jiu-Jitsu Kaisen. And now look, he over here trying to, <sighs> trying to hold it up and stuff like that. Like, you ain't going to crush me. And then, and then of course, you know, Cyclops trying to appeal to him and stuff like that. And then, you know, him still, just Bash is just still not getting it. Like, nigga, you one of us, bro. Your mama decided to not be here with us. Your mama decided, man, you know, Charles came to try to save you, man. She tried to come and save you, bro, and she was like, no. She left you by yourself, man. We was trying to get you come play with us. You could have been one of the originals, man. You could have been like us with a tight-ass suit on. And, you know, I guess you'd have been wearing purple and black with, with an X-Men logo. But you'd have been one of us. And even the Betty Boo's point on YouTube, yes, man. She, 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 People used to think Jubilee was useless and just really showed she is an essential part of the team. But... Even to try to like uh, adhere to Bastion's human side. Bastion was like, man, fuck that. And you want to know why? Because of this bullshit right here. Here with this what we were talking about. Them stupid ass Magneto protocols where it's like, let's send missiles and, and see what happens. Let's let's send a couple of missiles and we'll see what happens then. Why are we not more creative? I mean, for damn, y'all gave us COVID. Like, why why we ain't y'all ain't came up with nothing else besides missiles? This was stupid. This was dumb. But for some reason, and, and you know what's fucked up about it? Bastion was like, man, look, they ain't gonna never fuck with us. They don't care about us. So he decided to go jump into his own shit. And what and, and what's fucked up about, about it? President Kelly gonna be under the under the thought that that shit worked. That's the most fucked up thing about it. They gonna really think that that shit worked, that them missiles hit. And that's what caused Asteroid M to explode when it was really bashed and flying his ass into that reactor. 
and fucking everything up. They gonna believe Magneto protocols worked. We need more missiles. God, we suck as humans sometimes. And then, of course, like we said, man, people's getting sucked out of Asteroid M. My boy uh, morphed and turned into Mr. Fantastic. And all of a sudden, Jubilee uh, one bodysuit didn't, didn't, didn't stick to the wall. Now she didn't fell out in space. Now, this is also where we understand this is a cartoon. Because um, how she out in space not freezing her ass off beats me. Don't know, don't know, um, don't know how this is working. Don't know how she just out in the atmosphere like that, just warm. And I know they're going to be like, oh, well, she on sunspot right now. So that's why she able to keep warm. Maybe. How she breathing, though, is is the question. If, if I just want to know that. Like, ain't no air up there. Like, we, we high enough to where she ain't in the earth atmosphere. So just saying. And then she was talking to him. So, um, okay. But we, again, it's a cartoon. So I digress. Then we move into, you know, of course, uh, Cyclops and them. Cyclops and the rest of the X-Men are trying to destroy Asteroid M before it hits Earth. Um, and so they send a signal to Cable. And then there's this, this touching hallmark moment where, you know, Cable finally realizes that, you know, he's had a mother all along in Jean Grey, which, if we're just being honest, it's fucking stupid. If I'm just if I'm just throwing it out there, this man was so mad at Jean Grey for these last couple of episodes, like, no, you're not my mother. Madeline Pryor is. Bitch, you didn't get raised by her either. You didn't get raised by Madeline Pryor at all. She just, like, Threw you in some mind nursery rhymes and then let a black dude walk off with you into the future. And he didn't even go back with you. Y'all both got separated. So to say you just so happy about Madeline Pryor being your mama, maybe you should have went suck with Gene because Gene would have never let that shit happen. But finally, he recognizes her as his mom, which has always been his mom. You know what? Anyway, anyway, look, we're not going to we're not going to stay on that. Um. Before they go, because obviously they're about to sacrifice themselves to try to destroy the asteroid from hitting Earth. Cable gets to see his father's eyes and then realize both of them have the same eyes. Thanks to Jean using her powers and stuff. This was touching, man. This was touching. This this made Cyclops the MVP of this season jubilee was a hard second i ain't gonna lie she was a hard second because she she also carried it she got a lot of screen time um he got he, he got a, she got a lot of screen time in this season um but cyclops really just bro gave us to show us how he's a good leader how he is a good leader as a husband and a father and and being cool with his his wife's side nigga and how he can be very empathetic to where everything comes. Cyclops didn't feel like no bitch in this whole season. Like, even when he didn't know what to do as a leader of X-Men, it was kind of like, how could Charles not lead us to me? We was all still kind of just like, at first we was like, man, there go Cyclops trying to be a bitch. We did not fully think that. We were sitting here kind of like, yeah, how you just not going to lead us to Cyclops? And then just gave it all to Magnus. We was with that, like, yo, he did a full circle. I can't, I don't even know if I should give him MVP or if I should give him most improved because he is the most improved X Men character out of the whole series. He made me believe in Cyclops again. Now I want a Cyclops toy. I want to put one back here with my treasure chest and everything because he made me believe again. And I fuck with that. I fuck with that. That shit was fire. And so, uh, you know, Cable got to kind of say goodbye and everything like that. Because as you can see, here we go. That This all the time that he spent with Madeline Pryor. And you sticking to this bitch. Why? So then we come back, of course, to everybody saying asteroid falling. Um, you see, um, we go back to Morph kind of fitting in, showing... Uh, um, Wolverine, Jean Grey, and stuff like that. And you know what's cool about this? I know a lot of people were kind of speculating that, you know, 
Morph had a crush on Wolverine. I I beg to differ on that. Here's my thing. I don't think Morph had a crush on Wolverine. I just really think Morph really was friends with Wolverine. Because if you think about it from the original X-Men, Wolverine was the only one that never gave up on Morph. He consistently looked for Morph. And even at the time where he thought all was lost, he mourned Morph. They were really good friends. And especially for something that's of a type of trauma bond that both of them have been through, but to know that each other have their backs. Both of these people have really never been too close to people. And when they do, they wind up losing them. So to have somebody to where it's like, yo, I know no matter what, at the end of the line, you got my back and you understand who I am as a person from both sides. I just think this showed a very powerful uh, version of friendship. Un, 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 not, nothing, and I don't think like there were really no romantic feelings. Now, again, I could be wrong. We don't know what we're going to get in uh, season two, but from what I picked up was these were people who really, truly cared about each other and was out of the entire team, kind of like how Jean Grey is with Aurora. This is what we saw with Morph and Wolverine. These are brothers. These are people who truly care about one another and will be there for each other no matter what. That was what I picked up on it. I'm not sure how y'all felt about it, but that's how I saw it. Then we moved to, uh, and then we moved to, once again, Professor X trying to fuck up some, trying to fix some shit he fucked up. And I'll be honest with you. I thought this is where we was finna get Onslaught. I thought something was finna happen where they both got to combine to become all Onslaught. But Magneto remembers who he is, floats out of the X-Wing, and then starts rising the uh, Asteroid M back up. Caught it before it could fall and destroy everything. And all of a sudden, that bitch disappears. Just poof. Poof. There goes the asteroid. Poof. There go the X-Men. Poof. There go everybody up there. Gone in an instant. And then we we come back to six months later. They call uh six months after E Day is what they naming it on the X-Men. Kind of how I'm feeling right now on this Wednesday. Now that we ain't got no more X-Men episodes coming out. Kind of feel like E Day for me as well. It you know just we ain't we ain't got nothing right now, and I don't, I don't like that we ain't got nothing right now. Like man, eh, I, don't, I don't I don't like it, but you know it is what it is. We it's over, and so that's what it is. So we come back to Forge at the at the X at the uh at the X Mansion, all destroyed and fucked up, and he has a board on here where it shows people who are missing or presumed dead because again, no one knows what happened. Very interesting to see though that. Scarlet Witch is off world. So you see presumed dead, presumed dead. And then we come across something. And so we got this freeze framed. And we see the people who are missing or presumed dead, who are off, off world, which we can see is Quicksilver and Scarlet, which we can only think that the two of them are together um, somewhere off world. And then, of course, Cable is AWOL. But the remaining X-Men that are still around is Emma Frost. Um, the chick with the big sword. I always forget her name, but the chick that can make weapons. Um, the chick from Queen's Gambit that played her in New Mutants. Uh, Dust, Exodus, Havoc, which of course is Charles, uh, uh, which of course is um, Cyclops' brother, Colossus and Iceman are still around as well as Shadowcat. Um, so if that being the case, we may see them take up the mantle as X Force to hold it down while you know we figure out what's going to happen to the X Men, and then as this is going on, and which is wild that Archangel is missing or presumed dead. And then, of course, Jubilee and Sunspot is AWOL. So, again, they landed on Earth before the asteroid hit. We don't know what happened to a magic. Thank you. The, uh, the, the lady's name is Magic. Um, we don't know what happened to them. So, uh, so they're missing. But also remember, though, Sunspot is rich. So it's nothing for them to have just disappeared and went to go hide out until everything was fixed, which makes a lot of sense. Um... 
So especially after everything that just happened and for them to be presumed gone, that's a real traumatic experience to lose all of your friends at one point and not knowing if they're dead or where they are or really to just presume that they're dead because the asteroid looked like it exploded. So to them, they may all just be gone. And then, of course, we have Bishop come back um, to come talk his shit. And then he says some uh, he says a question about where. And then that's when we get that's when we get the setup for the next season. So we get the X-Men split up in two places. The future, 3960 AD, and Egypt in the 3000 BC. Now, of course, we go to BC. We got Rogue over there along with Nightcrawler, Professor X, Beast, and Magneto. And in the future, we got Cyclops and Jean Grey. And then um they pull up to some gang, and then Nathan Summers walks out um, as a, now a, a Muslim prophet, or whatever he is now, um, just out of the shadows. But it shows, though, too, that they're also still in Egypt with both times in the future and in the past. And so if we know anything, we know that that coincides with one of the big bads, our boy Abunsur. A.K.A. Apocalypse. That's right. That boy Apocalypse is back. And we know that he's going to be the big bad in season two. Which, And then we could just speculate that he's the reason that they are in both of these different time sets. Now, Sage G um, on YouTube, now you, you didn't catch us earlier, uh, so I know you came in a little late, so you didn't catch us earlier, but we talked about why there shouldn't be a Spider-Man 98. So if you want to know why, uh, when this comes out tomorrow, go back. I fully explain why I say we do not need a Spider-Man 98 to come out. Um, And so we see that his whole entire city is being built, and then... After that goes, we get an Easter egg after the credits, which is a modern day Genosha. We see the flags hanging. And then, of course, we see the debris come away and we see Gambit's card and we see them blue lips yet again to let us know that it is the futuristic, <laughs> ooh, excuse me, apocalypse. And that can only mean one thing. That our boy Gambit is about to get himself a resurrection as one of Apocalypse's four horsemen. The horsemen of death. Ooh. Come on now. Come on now. Then with them remaining X-Men that's, that's still there. Oh, we going to have us some fun, y'all. We going to have us some fun on season two. We're going to have us some fun on season two. <laughs> Captain Iron Boot Chili stated, my man Cable went in, Nathan Little, and came out Nathan X. <laughs> yep. I was just waiting for him to do this. Assalamu alaikum, my brother and sister. <laughs> like, wait, what? What the fuck happened to you while you was out here? <laughs> what the fuck happened to you? What the fuck happened to you? Uh, I'm like uh, Betty Boo on YouTube, man. I, I, we all were sad when Gambit went down, man. And uh, like myself, ooh, I cried myself for, for a few days, man. I ain't cry. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I, I I was hurt though. I was hurt, but also too, I held out because I thought something futuristic might have changed the timeline and stuff like that. Um. And everything, and so that's what made me kind of hold on and not really let it hit me like that. And Captain Iron Boot Chili, yes, if you if you wait till the end credit after they um showed a little display where they're showing all the different X Men, there's an Easter egg afterwards after that. Yeah, and it shows. Uh, it doesn't fully show him, but like what we just uh, what I showed you in the video, his hand with the dust blowing off, and then you see the close up of his mouth talking, which just let know that the futuristic one with all the the uh, alien technology a part of him is in present time for X-Men 97. Um, and I just think that was such a phenomenal way 
to end off season one, to guarantee a season two, because it kept us wanting more. I was so glad that it wasn't 20 something episodes with these other filler episodes. It got right into the thick of it. And I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I, and I couldn't have asked for anything better. Shout out to everyone that worked on X-Men 97. And I cannot wait for season two to drop. Um, whenever they decide to announce it. So I'm looking forward to that. And, um, that is all I have for y'all with straight out of a comic book, man. I'd like to uh, thank everybody for tuning in today.